stages of this game. The light show comes on down. Traff will be kicking off a deciding match now between Thunder Talk and Egypt. Now, what's going to happen with this Braum that has been the um, the power pick of this series? The brand, the Braum, they've uh, all the bees. That sounds like a thing that I've at this point. Um, lots going to happen with them. So Heatsy banning vastly different stuff from uh, previous games in the series. We still have the Renekton available. We have, uh, which oh. is immediately locked in, Hoya. Willing and able to take that one away. Solar Kill has struggled on an individual level, and the Renekton is a pick which punishes struggling laners, and it means that um, the Renekton can get such a lane lead that you can roll into a mid-game team fight with such a huge amount of gold that it can start winning you the game. And uh, now they banned the Cassante as well, but Solo Kill has defaulted to the first two games and lost both matchups. Let's make that clear against the Nar and the Poppy to different results, yes, but the laning phase in particular has been. Um, Pretty lackluster, I think it's fair to say. The response, though, is Crying gets the Lucian. It's away from you, Cal. Jirjir gets that Lilia again. Do TT pick up the Corky here? No, 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 no. Yukal's not the Corky favorite player. He'll play the Zeri instead, mm, and he's fair. happy to play that barrier into it. This is the evolution of the AD carry mid -man. We started with the Trist Corky. When we saw the Trist being banned, we then saw the Lucian into the Corky, and then we saw when we saw the Lucian picked up early, we saw the Zeri into the Lucian. That is the flow chart of AD carries. There's a lot of words happening at once, but go and check some of these games. That is how it's evolved. Yukal was the first player to play the Zeri mid in the LPL. You take, well, he takes the barrier on the Lucian and the Zeri. To take hard level one trades, get themselves a better positioning in lane so they can get towards that level two and level three, and then just be an AD carry. And that's all you need for right now. Brand is up, but they're debating the Zyra here. It's locked in. Another one of those champions that's been very, very potent. I wonder now whether that will force a Leona pick. It's not. It's going to be a pick of the Nar for solo kill. The range matchup into the Renekton can be pretty obnoxious, but just be a bit wary of Renekton's ability to flash or slice dice on top of you and then Use that ruthless predator to be a real threat to that second phase of Banzo. Brawl off the table. It's so potent. You asked what the answer would be to it. Well, just get rid of it. I wonder whether we we'll also see some looks towards something like the Ash as well. Fourth one XN or something a little bit different. I want to fourth pick the Leona here as well into that Zyra as you said, the priority going mm. up as well. I think it's now the Braum's banned. Leona is, is back on the table, baby. It was even banned in that second yeah. game. Uh, a lot of... Um... A lot of prior to champions still left up and available. Uh, TT wouldn't surprise me to... I mean, what they can do is they can let the Leona go through and they can go towards the Nautilus. I still think they're okay with that one. But Leona into Lilia, that, that is quite painful. They ban out the MF anyway, because regardless of the uh, engage of support, it will still be strong uh, with the Lilia. So MF going to be banned away. The Ziggs, the combo champions being taken away. Very scary with that. The Leona fourth pick shouldn't surprise us. We said that might well be the option. We are now expecting a bot lane lock in for yeah. TT. Uh, do we get the Zeri mid lane or bot lane? It can it's be flex, either. Yeah. I, I think Yukal's happy to play that into mid lane, and I think he'd, he'd, in a lot of ways he'd prefer that into that. He's, he's won that matchup, that's fine. So, um, now are we going to get kill lane or are we going to get the Nautilus? We can get Callista Renata. That has been making a comeback. The Callista's locked in. Okay. The Renata is in. So you see that Leona and say, okay, you're strong. You don't exactly do well versus the Callista Renata, though, because if you do overstep, you die very, very quickly. What the plan is now going to be is probably Baytron hard clearing towards that bot side to get Callista Renata a wave crash where either you can then get into the enemy jungle and steal camps or you can force the bot lane off of XP or kill them. And then between the Renata and the Zyra, your zone control in those corridors around objectives in the river can be very <clears throat> difficult for the Leona, the Lilia, even the Lucian if he's pressing R to manage. Be very careful of your ranges and when you pull the trigger because the counter engage can be absolutely lethal. That it can. So, TT, very strong lanes. Uh, you have the Zero, which can do good versus the Lucian. I wouldn't call that a hard winning matchup or a counter matchup, but it is good enough that um, Zero will have pressure, have good wave clear, and then be an AD carry. Renekton can do very well into that Nar, I think, particularly with the way that Solo Kill's been playing and how Hoyer has been playing. I would expect Hoyer to be taking that matchup um, in the early few levels. And then also in bot lane, Kalista Renata, one of the most lane dominant lanes you can ever possibly draft. So, I think. Coming through from this, TT have a very lane-centric draft. They don't always have the easiest engage here. It is a Renata ult with a Callista flying forward. That's the best you've gotten. Maybe you can get Zyra with some long-range roots. They need to play through lane on the other side. EDG, you got to survive that first um, attempt at them. And then you need to see if you can get Leona starting to blow some flashes and give yourself some inroads into the game. <coughs> yeah, that will be the, the question on people's minds. Can you make that happen? And... A lot of pressure on Wink to be 
the focal point of a lot of these engages, especially into some of the members of that Calista, like that Zyra, who you will be tasked consistently with threatening JJ back on the Lilia. Two good games from him on it. Couldn't get it over the line in game, line in game two. And TT looking a lot more competitive, a lot faster paced, a lot more willing to pull the trigger compared to the 20 minute first blood of game one. On the verge of putting themselves nearly, nearly a lock for getting out of the Ascension group. But onto the rift we go. The play will have to decide the rest of it. surprise I think to see both junglers starting on the top side of the map and looking towards bot lane we see an attempt uh, from EDG to interrupt the Zyra plans pretty risky here I think with the champions involved so it looks like page one will be given that opportunity to get the plant spawns and manage it from there it's gonna be actually yeah, it's um it's a different thing to say level one you have a brawn you can kind of run at them okay or a nautilus or something much harder to play the level one especially against the renex and uh, the zeri is not even bad at level one if they want to walk over as well particularly with that um right click passive so edg they do not want to mess with that they do not want it to walk into that top side jungle they know that page one will be making a beeline towards bot lane uh, the, the order of business now for EDG is do as best you can in these early lanes. Don't eat the hard trades. Get as much poke as you can as possible. Try and take out some of the fangs of TT. That has to be the plan. Can they pull it off? Uh, game one, they had a nice slow game. Leave got the stacks freely. JJ got to be really obnoxious on the Lilia. Game one. But the moment it became more about those mid-game fights, TT looked a lot more dangerous than EDG's flaws in execution began to shine through again. I'm not sure the shine is quite the correct term. Burn through the house. Still slightly on fire, unfortunately, from then. In the easiest split. Yeah, it's kind of, kind of the real. opposite for saying the house always wins. The house is now on fire. What's happened <laughs> to the house? Um, level 2 is going to get hit now. First by EDG's bot lane. Ooh, that's a huge moment. The damage back. 1xm burning down. Cleanses away. Level 2 back on through. The heal back and leave is in danger. Could potentially bail out. Flash for flash. Wink can't quite get the autos. Leave just about alive onto the turret. First blood to Wink. Turret shots come on through and will survive. Feather will look to trade it back. But an absolute mess of a play in the bot lane. What happened to the XP? 1xm and Feather, they don't hit the wave enough. I wonder whether Feather should have just thrown his loyalty program through the wave just to get some damage down because the level 2 is hit by Leave and Wink. The lane dominant bot lane of the Callista Renata does not get themselves the early kill. They lose the first kill of the game. That is disaster for TT's early game plan. They must recover this through the bot lane somehow. They don't have the wave shove particularly and now they'll be forced to reset. I wonder whether Beach one can interrupt the back because this is all well and good assuming they can reset. If they cannot, it gets trickier again. So Beach one just uses Q which is the big problem here. Your Q Can't is a lot it. of how he can do that. Yeah, he's walking in towards that bot side but yeah. Managed to get there on early time. Let's have a look again because, yeah, you're right. The level 2 comes on through and EDG just pulled the trick. They do, and they just don't hit the level 2. I don't know what the hell's happening with the E-Bot though, XP. There's a million off. They could have maybe killed one extra thing. I wonder whether Feather just had to throw an E through the wave. Uh, the problem is in the lead up to this. You can see that immediately Leave and Wink say, right, we've got to hit this wave as best as we can. And they managed to do that. And Wink just presses S, wait to seize the hop. And the moment he sees what direction is in throws the Zenith Blade and gets that kill. Every summon is down there, but that is exactly what you're looking for if you're EDG and TT. We expect better at this point. TT, this bot lane as well. I mean, considering that the bot... One extent has been such a big point of power for this team. The fact that him and Feather make that, make that mistake is not what you expect. The rest of the lane's marginally going in favor of TT, but the bot lane, which you drafted for this bot lane advantage, um, does still have that CS lead, but giving up that first kill is not what you wanted. The game plan around Callista Renata, for those, um, if you want the best watching material for this, go back to 20, go back and watch 2022 Spring. Go watch V5's games there, actually, because they're incredible at this. The, um, with Phot Photo Control, we're very, very good at them at that point. Um, the thing which they would do would, uh, you would end up getting those early first trades, level one, two, three, um, and you would end up getting kill threat. You'd either kill them or you'd force the enemy team out from under their tower, or if they stayed under the tower, they'd kill them. So even if you didn't do anything to the bot lane, you'd at least get jungle camps in their favor. So it is a whole side of the map of pressure, which only lasts for the early part of the game and only lasts oh, beyond man. that point if you can then um, continue that point. They've managed to zone out a lot of CS. And this is the start of that play. Exactly, while the kills went against them, still burned every summoner, the wave state sucked, and 
They were forced to kind of interrupt their initial back, seeing Beituan coming on down, even if he didn't fully interrupt them with damage. And so they dropped away. The wave got frozen in a very difficult position. And some ways for all that the kill went against them, it's still 20 CS in the favor right now of 1XM, which is still really frustrating. Yeah, it is. But imagine how bad it could have been if they oh, didn't yeah. lose that first blood. That's the thing. How bad is that? I mean, well, hmm. I suppose leave and wing. Now we have to ask the question. If they got that kill, but what was it at the cost of? Wasn't it at the cost of their wave state? They're still losing pressure on the spot side. EDG looking to potentially look for a fight. So whilst he comes through, wing can come through the ignite. Culling is across a number of the plants. Down goes the dragon away. 100 HP taken by the Zarian. Backline goes wing. And TT caught in the pit. It's a disaster. Two members dead. Three. As EDG just murdered them all. And any question about whether this early game was still looking okay for 1XN and Feather in this bot lane has now been answered. It's now been uh, put off the table. The Kalissa and Arda are behind. They do get themselves that dragon, but four kills over to the side of EDG, split goal between those members is exactly what EDG wanted. They did do well in their early lane. They did do well at getting onto the board and EDG in a series where if they lose this, I believe they're mathematically eliminated, will get, would have seen, uh, would have left and see that. Leave gets himself a death attack to get that quick recall. It's a Leave special. We see him do it more than nearly any other AD carry to make that one happen. And it prevents any serious threat there. That is going to happen nice and early and worth saying as well, Klein had level 6, got to pull the calling off. Yukal didn't. Didn't have that ability to turn it around and the damage fully was largely absorbed by the plants. I mean, Zara had no plants and you still did a lot of damage afterwards. The grubs still go the way of Zyra. The early dragon still goes the way of Zyra. It's not a done deal, but EDG have gotten that early gold, which is what you need to see. So that's um, part one of this plan on form for EDG. Now they need to stop pulling the trigger, stop blowing some of these flashes. They have Wink. You can get out onto the map. That's the second part of this. If you can get leave, um, kind of comboing up with Wink and Jeje could be a big thing. He's trying to pull it out. Oh, That's Yukal on. Oh, on the wall. Oh, nicely done. Yukal delivered a kill by a nice play from Beige One, and that gets them on the board. So that is good gold over to Yukal. Brings that matchup back to even in the mid lane. Gets something onto Jeje because what EDG wants to do now is make sure that um, Jeje and Wink can start making those big plays. By killing one of the of that combo, it allows TT back into the game where maybe they can uh, start getting these aggressive early plays. Beige Plant about to get attacked here. He's actually in a dangerous position. Now, not really about to get a lot of plants. Misses the grasping roots. But still, with the plants there, it's a bit tricky to go for too much more. The plant comes on down. Krug stolen away. Just about gets the walk on out. And once again, uh, we find uh, TT, despite things falling apart in the early game, they find themselves with um, a new hope. So they'll have to rely on Obetron Kenobi. Help us, Obetron Kenobi, your only help. Of course, his trusty sidekick, uh, Yubaka, his co-pilot his co in the mid lane <laughs> as he tries to fly oh. towards that play. I need to think of other things for the rest of the team. We're still working on that. What sounds like a droid name. Oh, that does. The, the problem is I'm trying to think which droid name at that point, but uh, we've at least got those ones. <laughs> Oh, he's an astromech, for sure. It's a it's an R2 R1XN, that's for sure. <coughs> Trying his very best to keep the ship flying. Has uh, fallen apart a little bit here in this one. He made some very alarming woo noises as he was attacked a couple <laughs> times in the bot lane. <laughs> yeah, CDG. Um, they will uh, look to strike back. Boba Feather. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Edward strikes back. Boba, are you kidding? <laughs> Boba Feather, are you kidding me? No, I wow. Um, Anakin Pride Walker. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we have fun. Yeah, Walker. Yeah, Walker. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Funnily enough, yeah, go back and watch the Clone Wars. Yeah, um, the, a, a, a lot of what happens in, in the Clone Wars does not pass the Geneva oh. Convention, folks. Nope. It's more like the, the, the Geneva Convention. Don't exist in Star Wars. Yeah, no, no, they don't. Um, well, I think technically there were the Yavin Accords. That was a thing. If you huh. look back in the extended universe, there are them, which is like conflict. But, but that's extended universe, which is no longer. It's Legends now, sadly. And nice. I'm probably, yeah, probably exposing myself as a bit more of a nerd than, than maybe. Maybe I should. Mate, have point, you seen what our job is? We yell at video games for for attention and money. Like, like we, yeah, we were going true. to be nerds on a grand true, true. scale. There's a little bit of uh, scuffling around this river right now. JJ and crying help secure that early scuttle crab before dragon would spawn. The second for TT and get a hold of it. And the minute and so until grubs as well. So potential trade of objectives around as well. Yeah, so if TT get them, they will have themselves, uh, I don't know, it doesn't feel like Attack of the Clones, but they have themselves uh, a million grubs with uh, more on the way. They must be very proud, very impressive. Um, EDG would want to stop that one and uh, make sure that they don't give in to that grub again and the Zerg rush which can come through. 
flashes back. He was never really a Zerg player, was he? No, was he, was he a Terran? He was Terran, really. Terran, yeah. Re reinvented that matchup. I, I believe what ended up happening was he was so good at his matchups that there were, like, the way it was meant to be, like, ZVT and stuff like that would be like. Um, so you had like versus Terran, and then you had versus Flash, because Flash played it so differently <laughs> that he would end up changing the matchups irrevocably. So once he learned the matchups, then you figured out how to play it after that point. Anyway, um, so let's come down to the wire here and see if these two teams have found anything more about this particular matchup. There is no brand this time, there is no Braum. It has been a different game, but with the Callista Renata being shut down, you have to. Probably cast EDG's early game in a bit more of a favorable light. Grubs are being started up to see if they can get themselves onto the Starcraft of League of Legends. That Zerg Rush, Grub again. Shout out to Judge Peanut in chat as well. We're about to execute all the six Grubs if TT can get a hold of all of them here. Yeah. Couple more of mine is Hoya. Does throw down the ultimate. Will be stunned in place, but at this point, He's able to slice and dice away. The turnaround with the Stranglethorn. Pretty huge. There is that order six Grubs. There's Emperor. Croc the team will enable some plays there as they went to try and uh, arrest him for crimes <laughs> against EDG in the Republic, but can't quite make it happen. I cannot believe you. All right, okay, TT. Um, Look, they were caught Mace window shopping. They, didn't, they managed to get that shot. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Okay. <laughs> Gonna order 66 you this one. And the best thing is, they Come have on. the Order 6 Grubs, they also have the Renata Ultimate, which is very truly the Order 60 Substance <laughs> team as all of the, the allies attack each other. EDG, um, not the best fight around there. Remember, TT still behind in gold, but they still have this early game window of power. If they can use that 6 Grubs to get some more gold off the of tower plates, maybe we can revisit the early game conversation for Thunder Talk. Doing a lot of damage, and they are getting a lot of those early objects. The gold is sort of there for EG. They've got a few hundred to their name, and that's nice. It's crying without a lot of mana. And you see a bit afraid as the Ruthless Predator comes on down. And Oya has a Conqueror stack. Gets another Q on through. The uh, damage is still pretty nasty. As Coldemeek is a, it's a dangerous ability. Yeah, I'm considering that Yukal, um, no Yukal, um, Crying had no flash, and Hoya mm. did. Um, See that Hoya could have just stayed on target and just used the fact that he had the flash and Kryon didn't to maybe get that kill. Doesn't quite happen and uh, he'll have to see if he can uh, bullseye that uh, Womp Rat with a with the T16 a little later. <laughs> How many new Hope puns can you fit oh. into one cast? Many. Well, I don't think he's buying an X-Wing right now, but maybe he will be <laughs> later on. I don't think you can buy that item, even, even in uh, Swarm. Are you kidding me? That would be so fun. We have the Annihilator, which is effectively a Death Star, but we don't have an X-Wing. Sad times. They are, they have very cool sound effects. They do, yeah, they do. Uh, what I've noticed as well is that a lot of them have taken sound effects from other champions, so there's like one which gives you ability taste, which basically is the, the Katarina E, so it makes it sound like the E reset from one of them. That's kind of fun. I like what they've done in that game. Let's see whether the swarm can come to bear here in TT. Uh, the plates are just to fall, about to fall off. They haven't managed to get that many plates at all. No. They're, they're, even this top one hasn't fallen so far. So TT, with the six grubs, they can maybe kill towers later, but they haven't got that plate gold, which is really what they would have liked to get with uh, again, another part of that early game objective coming in from 1XM um, on this on this Callista. Callista playing from behind, behind is not the same as Callista, who is not hyper snowballed. No, exactly that. But they've still got a lot of those early objectives, and uh, for all the dragon fight went very wrong, they did get the dragon. Worth noting, we just got the second one, so there is that to their name, and they have got a lot of ways of threatening turrets between a couple lady carries and uh, the Zyra and the Renata with the Callista empowering. It be a bit scared of standing under turrets as EDG be a question for another time because grubs are only good if you can actually attack the turrets. Yeah, that's um that that has been um this is probably a good time to talk about a larger conversation. Dragon's coming up a little later. Harold might be fought over. But basically because of one of the reasons I think that LPL has fallen off somewhat in their macro, particularly in particularly compared to last year, is because the change away from two heralds to grubs has been very different um it terms of the way that you hit towers and use them to play around the game. LPL did get used to that double herald. They did get they haven't quite got used to the grubs quite so far. They need to learn how to do that more so. Getting the six scrubs is very powerful. The Herald on top of that can be very powerful too, but I still feel like LPL is before, it's behind where it was before, when it was about um, those two Heralds. Being able to slam them both into mid turret and open up that area of the map. With the map changes too, definitely helping EDG. Looking to try and stop TT from getting to the river. Great fun as well. Starting to keep his plants alive. One gets tapped by a Q from the Ezreal. There's one Xen in danger here. Solar Flare is Captain Jack cleansed away from Forced to reset though on 20% HP. That'll win them the Herald. Harry, EDG, uh, they're now going to try and see if they can stop 
TT from going towards this. Oh you don't man. have your Callista. He's on vision again. The W lands, which means he has to back off yet again. Teleport coming in. Oh, Star take over, but the teleport behind puts some difficulty down. Herald secured by TT. So they get the little team lullaby, but a slice and then a flash over the wall. Should keep oh, what a moment! Walks into the flash ult from Solo Kill and then JJ secures the kill afterwards. It has been a disaster game for 1XN. Gets chunked out in the mid lane, blows his summoner of that cleanse, walks up towards the Herald, immediately has to back off because he's on vision, and then as soon as he goes to try and help Hoyer, he walks into a Meganar ult, blows the flash, dies anyway. 1XN has had such a poor early game here. TT, they needed this bot lane to be ahead through some mistakes in their early lane and now mistakes in the bigger fights too. They have not been able to find these big early game plays they wanted. The hostile takeover secures that Herald, but it doesn't get them the fight. It really isn't what they need, and 1XN um, doesn't respect coming over the wall. Top squad immediately dies after this point. 1XN, we expect better from him. And it was a blind flash from Solo Kill, don't get me wrong, but it's still really sucky, and he, he got caught by the baited trap of the, of the ward over the wall where the honey fruit was. You could see that gleaming there to bring his HP back up to the point where they could fight. Uh, and he couldn't. And that's another death over. They get the Herald, yes, but it feels like every objective TT has taken has come a pretty heavy cost in terms of death count in particular. We're in a position where you've got a 0 3 Callista. The only kill you've got, yes, it's on a Zeri, and we've seen what the likes of Jackies can do with that as the game rolls True, on. Yes. But, uh, Hey, you Still say that. Yeah, I'm just saying it. Ucal did it first. The first mid lane area, I believe, in pro was by was by um, by Ucal in this season so far. So he's been the trendsetter in this one. Maybe Jack is going to think thank him. <laughs> so we've been hearing. And towards the mid lane we go. There is a herald in inventory. Dragon has been summoned, but it is trying to teleport in and started that one up nice and early. Okay, so TGG get themselves to that objective first, and TT. Um, because they don't have the gold on the Callista, they can't Wrecking Ball through a lane and get towards those objectives first. EDG, they can now wait for Swell Seeds, they can wait for Ezreal Poke, they're looking to push out mid lane. Wink is briefly caught and chunked out a little, he doesn't have that war mobs just yet, but EDG will still get themselves that dragon without a cost. Yeah, they don't drop the Herald, Baytime was debating doing it and wanting sense to by a couple of Orthos there through the wave. Fighting over that, flash out from the Solar Flare from Beige One. All the while though, Zeri gets a turret in the top lane, that will be first turret towards TT as Boya. Tumps onto Cryin, who does have Flash, yet to force the pop in. Now takes a huge amount of damage. Needs to be very afraid indeed, flashing away from the Dominus damage. Yeah, don't get cocky, kid. That Renekton is very, very strong still. Hoya trying his best, helping put into the mid lane. Feather flashes forwards. Oh, looks like this battle station is fully operational. Down comes the lightning crash, firing when ready. Herald summoned, tower falls, and TT strike back in a valiant way. Yeah, that Herald uh, looks less like a, a big Void creature, or more like a Star Destroyer at that point. He goes straight into the fray, and poor Jirje is taken down by that Star Cruiser. And uh, feels like EDG just were not respectful enough in that mid lane. TT, their early game has not been slick, but they now find themselves at a gold advantage. They break open two turrets, which gives them more map plays. Zeri takes one just before all that starts off, and then in the space of a moment, they get the other two. Map control, suddenly TTs. I, the fact that it's Zyra in here is huge, and I think if this wasn't Zyra, maybe they don't go for this play, but because Zyra is now kind of caught out, I feel like if um, I feel like Zyra could have been caught out if they stayed for that push, but now with the six grubs, you just destroy these turrets so, so quickly. You show one opening in the map, starts to explode. TT, bring themselves back into this game. Flash handshakes while well, the catch out GG. Credit to Feather for finding that one as well. Led to that additional kill going the way of Yukal. 2 0 on this Zeri with a cull cashed in. Will be tasked with being yeah. the primary damage source this game. And I'll say Yukal, fourth game of Zeri mid so far. He was the first player to pull it out. He's the player who's played it the most. He has revolutionized this pick. And we've only seen it in top level um, 11, no, 12 times now across all of top level play. A third of those games have been from Yukal. He has been the trendsetter here. And you can see players like Shobi picking it up in solo queue. You can understand why Yukal has prioritized this. It has looked so much better than his Corky, much like the Lucian. He has looked so much more comfortable on this. Now at 2 0, he is in the drive seat. He is at, uh, he is at the helm to see if he can pilot the starship through to a finish. Let's see whether it can make the, uh, Ascension group run in less than 12 game wins, but that'll is be there a... better be a Kessel run in uh, less yes than 12 passing? Yes, it is. I can't believe, by the way, but I really like the solo movie, weirdly. I, 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 I that, that movie was criminally underrated. It was just released in the same year as Deadpool, and what killed it, really. 
but I think one of the one of the Fantastic Beasts movies. Yes. Go watch that movie. It's much better than you than a lot of people remember. Um, there, I can't believe they tried to justify the twelve parsecs because George Lucas didn't realize it was a moment. Uh, it was a, a measurement of distance rather than than, than speed <laughs> so I or think time. What he said at the time, in fact, so was that it was supposed to show that Han Solo was a bit of a blagger and he was <laughs> kind of like kind of lying slightly to make himself look more impressive. If you see that what makes I mean. a lot more sense. And look, either way, um, I can't believe that they tried to justify it. Some things should just be left as random trivia. Yeah. The problem is, it's, um, what's it called? <laughs> it's, it's, it's a bit of a meme on the free clothing store uh, subreddit, which is, uh, it's, it's a blorp shitto. <laughs> It's like, oh my god, a character showed up before the credits, oh. it's Blorp Shitto. <laughs> and, um, and then you fade to black, and no one knows what the hell's just happened. Everything is now one of those things, which doesn't make sense. And somehow we're meant to get excited uh, what, what for it. What is that out of, out of context? It, it, it is meant to be something which has no sense, it has no context, where it's just come from like a niche storybook or yep. comic, which is then so which is never used as a major plot point beyond this point. Marvel does it, Star Wars plots. Yep. You can, whenever you run into that in your major media franchises now, that's what you can call it. Um, I'm glad we can use that on the coaster and get to be more God fast, to, fast and loose with our language as uh, TT. Um, they'll find themselves their own niche through to a victory. Maybe it has not been through the the main storyline of trying to play through this um, chosen one of this Callista in the bot side. This was meant to be what the, the draft was about. However, they have found themselves a new hope in this mid laner. UCAL, the sole carry really with the scaling and the gold lead who will have to try and come up against EDG. EDG though, uh, we've been very uh, TT focused, so I'll apologize for that a little bit. It's just the puns come thick and fast. EDG, great early game from them for the most part. They managed to shut down this Callista Renata through laning play, through their early skirmishes as well. If they get themselves this next dragon to get themselves onto Soul Point, or they get a good gold trade besides that, I think that they can very much outlast this early game. They've got themselves the Muramana transformation on leave. Soul Point in 20 seconds. We'll see if the JJ Binks can find a way I to make their Kalan <laughs> wow. Republic going on three. I mean, he's playing like a cryptid from the jungle. Yeah, that makes about sense. <laughs> uh, well, well, yeah, no one, that one is tentatively passed. There's uh, EDG trying to see if they can bring their guns to bear. Cryan. Uh, better accuracy than a Stormtrooper, and that one gets most of that culling on form, but it's not that much of a chunk. It forces TT Ooh. off the bait. That, 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 that true shot barrage, that one is a bit more of that. Uh, I, uh, that one misses. That one is yeah, uh, yeah, very that much one. more. E number 11 of the game, so to speak, to reference the blaster, especially the E 11 blaster, yeah, that's the one. Uh, it's uh, very powerful, and that one, DE, did you get themselves that dragon? TT may be looking for a start towards this top side. Get some vision control. They're Hoya. not getting into the river first. Oh, yeah, we'll jump onto JJ, who will watch out E away. Dragon secured. TT didn't feel comfortable to go to the river, but it's looking pretty good for EDG now that the gold is close enough to even. They've got themselves soul point. They can get the turret here. This is looking pretty okay right now. It is, EDG. Um, I've normally criticized their team fights. Even they've looked better today. EDG, they've looked way better in the Early game once again is even in gold and now slightly goes into their advantage with Cryon taking that side lane turret, almost bringing that mid lane advantage uh, back down to even. <coughs> well, the river and the top side, large in control of TT. There are a couple wards here, one just over the wall near you, Callum, one in the back of the pit that aren't swept out right now from TT. So EDG not feeling too threatened and too pressured into collecting or <coughs> face checking really anybody in that river right now as you, Cal. This is one mini, gets the other two. Important uh, item completion, we have that QSS up for UCAL, mm -hmm. which is what a lot of that gold has gone towards. Uh, one of the problems when you're running um, some of the engaged supports that you want to go towards, uh, stuff like the Warmogs, uh, like that first, or even the Locket, you don't tend to get that Mikhail's. Kind of surprised that Feather didn't go towards the Mikhail's uh, because of that um, Lily as well, but he needs that HP to play a bit more aggressively so he can survive through to that Glister Ultimate, also potentially. Tank, tank up some of that swell seed and Q poke for the rest of his team should the need arise for it. Uh, gonna be potentially taking the scuttle here from Beijing on one extend, but ADG not able to get it. Okay, so that's gonna be some vision now proclaimed by TT. Yeah, worth noting <coughs> as well. One XN, finding through the Rage Blade, trying to find a moment to step into the river, is really afraid. Is once again being left in the mid lane. 1v2, can't stand there in clear as JJ walks up with lead. We'll take that tier 1 finally. Two shot barrage coming on down. All the while though, TT still in the river, and this is a double AD carry plus a Zyra. Baron will disappear if you stay away for too long. So, both of these teams, good amount to uh, good ability to rush, but Zyra is the queen of Baron Rush. So you cannot allow that to get off vision vision at any amount of time. Um, EDG, they have three minutes on a potential soul. Be an uh, ocean soul. 
I think that Ocean Soul is quite valuable here. You have that mm -hmm. Zonia's, which can help for Jirjir. Of course, for Leona, always valuable. Leona is, um, typically... Ocean Soul is good in these particular scenarios. It's always useful, but it's particularly useful for when, one, you run a poke battle, or it's poke for poke, you get to activate the soul, and you get to shrug off the yeah, enemy points. Fantastic there. So <laughs> Ezreal's really good at that, and it works against the Zyra. Lots of things that work out there. Also works when you have tanks which survive to the point where they can get that um, prop down so many times. Yeah. Now, they don't have it for this fight, though Baron has spawned. That is the ult used for the plants. They won't have that ult for the fight now, and EDG might consider themselves a bit of a fight here. Going down about half HP, teleports come so Solar kill! Through. Then pretty low, so good looking for that flank on in as JJ goes gone to avoid the hostile takeover. Staying alive right now is Yukal, who throws down the lightning crash. Damage back with EG is huge. Lilting lullaby means that Yukal falls though. 1XN tries to hop his way around, but is immediately brought down. There is no Anima squad here, no Battle Bunny skins available. And they lose both AD carries, and the Baron's still there, and EDG have the help fast to look at this one. Yeah, themselves. the thunder is sounding a little quiet. TT have been shot down around the Baron, and EDG take that leash, and the two-member advantage right, look for another take. fight. So the kill's gonna be tongue low and goes down. Big Root onto Leave as well, who got hit by the Grasping Root. Base one with the plants could still be a threat, but they just can't get in there. They lose one, yeah, but Baron secured. And Dragon spawns in a minute and a half, EDG! Ooh. Get another! Leave gets another parting kill, and he's the one with the the true shot eyes to match the true shot barrage. Gets himself a huge kill. This might just be the kill which gets EDG into the advantage. Now with Beichuan dead, they don't have the jungler across the map to start being part of the big setup for the dragon spawning in a minute. Baron, soul spawning in a minute. EDG very much into this game. The early game play was great for them. They had a bit of a slip up, gave Yukal a bit of gold, but they are well and truly back into it. The Callista is not a factor. It really is just about that Zyra and that uh, Zeri. Immediately you have Yukal trying to get out of this play, can't quite manage it. And, you know, Beichuan has already used his ultimate, so he can't control the play either. One Xan, not in a great position, flies straight into the side of the team fight. He's not strong enough. This is the problem with the Callista. If you are not ahead, you cannot control these fights. You can't brawl your way through things. The fact that he lost lane and lost these fights so hard, just thrown TT under the bus. Sterax comes up just in time for Soda Cold to deny the end, and so one extent doesn't get that reset. They get one on the back end, they can't quite finish off leave as well, despite a good root dog. There's no additional follow up, right? It's a support jungler, and uh, base one, a known quantity because he was clearing the ward. Easiest true shot, Raj, of leaves life. EDG now get themselves towards this dragon spawn. 10 seconds, 6,700 oh. damage from leaving that last fight. Can oh, he match there. that again? No summoners on the carries of TT. It has only got that much harder. Leave though, also without cleanse and flash. That might be an angle for TT, but it is a slim one. It would have to be one in a million. Solo kill, trying to manage the rage bar using the grok to get towards it. Would be walking across vision if he comes towards his flank. Crying, gets the culling down, but to get that much damage, just his own control. Solo kill, and own quantity is Hoya. Feather looking for that flank into the back line. They go, and they get the ultimate across over the hostile takeover. Gets GJ pretty low, but not down. The blast cone keeps him alive as the ultimate from the Callista brings. I was about to say Feather to safety, not anymore. It's GJ now looking for a swell to. Oh! And a huge combo. They'll get the Lilting Lullaby, and it will be good night to TT. Good night to them looking for a win in this series. And EDG plays spoiler in a phenomenal game three. It was as if a million TT fans cried out and were suddenly silenced. EDG blast their planet apart. And it is JJ, the instrument of the demise towards the end of it. EDG at the brink of one and four. They lose this series, they would have been out. You would have only been seeing them in 2025. Beyond this point, they keep themselves alive. TT cannot hit the magic four wins. EDG will not four to five losses. It is just excellent stuff. Fantastic play from the level one in the lane. And all from there, at least Cryon gets one more at the end of it to rub salt in the wound. Thunder Talk grounded in this game. Lightning does not strike for a fourth time. And EGG moved to two and four. EDG, and they find themselves their form maybe a little too late, but enough to get themselves into this conversation. It would be akin to a miracle run for themselves to make it through to the top four of this Nirvana group. They have to win all of their remaining games. TT, they will rue this opportunity. EDG were not looking strong before this. They look pretty strong today, but it feels like, particularly in the draft of game one, and particularly in some of the gameplay in that game three with that early game, they squander an opportunity to get themselves a much stronger standing within the Nirvana group. They <coughs> fail with the Callista Renata there. They slow game in game one. Even in that game three, the objectives they got never came for free. They really struggled to pick up kills and 
will be some uh, VOD review, I'm sure, that will be required because they uh, did not look very clean there. <laughs> Folks, hello. Um, that was our last game of today. Hi, I'm Alex, also known as Nomara. This is Sam, also known as Initialize. My voice is starting to get a little bit ropey again, folks. I'm glad that it uh, ended when it did. I hope you've been enjoying it. <clears throat> I've been casting so much that I am starting to lose my voice, and it was pretty bad earlier this week. Um, there is no official English broadcast on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, so we hope that you've enjoyed our pseudo-official broadcast on the other side. We have co-streaming rights, and we cast it like it's official anyway, so we hope that you've enjoyed it. Um, Sam, I believe uh, you're going to yes, go stream, so he's going to go do that now. Thank you so you much for joining... It. Uh, me for the stream again today. He'll be back again tomorrow to um, help with this as well. Always appreciate my brother.